takes me take us takes us to our next speaker, who is Dr. Yasmin Hussain, who is a an emergency medicine consultant and college tutor uh, in the Oxford Deanery. Uh, topic today is going to be review of training of specialty doctors in emergency medicine, uh, and also is going to be talking about the ARCP process. Dr. Yasmin, please come to the point. Thank you. Right. This is the last lecture of the day, so I'm trying to be as quick as possible because I think uh, we've had a long, wonderful day, but we are tired. Um, has anybody taken part in the ARCP process? Anybody here? Yeah. yeah. Good. Excellent. So I don't. You guys can you know leave if you want to. There's you know you probably know the the, the, the system, but what I'm, what I'll do is I'm going to talk about the ARCP process. It's in the context of emergency medicine trainees, uh, but it's really applicable to other specialties as well. Uh, the, the principles are the same. Right, so the objectives are to understand the ARCP process for the trainees and supervisors. Uh, as I said, it's, it's the same applies to other specialties. I'm going to then talk about what the ARCP panel is and uh, who is it comprised of and, and what uh, qualifications they need. Uh, to talk very briefly about ARCP outcomes and then the potential impact of all this on patient safety and uh, quality of care for patients. So, what's ARCP? It's uh, as the, uh, uh, you know, the initials say, Annual Review of Competence Progression. And it's basically a formal and structured examination of evidence provided by the trainee uh, to a panel to ensure that a doctor is, sat is progressing satisfactorily in, in each stage of medical training. So, um, it applies to, oh, am I, yeah, it's done for all trainees from foundation stage to all the higher specialty, specialty trainee, trainees, uh, i.e. from F, uh, F1, F2 to all the way to a, uh, HST or ST7, depending on specialty it is. Uh, it's as, as the name says, annual, it's an annual meeting, however, uh, we tend to do more than one meeting a year, uh, depending on different trainees. Some are out of sync, some are on maternity leave, some are doing some OOPs, or, you know, OOPs, which is basically out of training uh, pre-hospital care or, or uh, it could be psychiatric care, for, different things. Emergency medicine trainees tend to pick a, a whole uh, variety of uh, interests. Uh, as I said, it's an annual meeting. The, the deanery panel, uh, and I'm going to talk about, uh, talk about that later, um, but what I did want to say was that the panel doesn't need to meet the trainee uh, when, we, when we do convene. However, in Oxford, we do like our trainees to come. They, they, they love getting that day off. Uh, they all come, and, uh, and, and uh, they're not really going to be assessed that day, but what they come to talk to us about is to, to, to reflect on the training they're getting at the, at the particular trust they are at. And that's really, really useful. Uh, so as a panel, when we're sitting there, the head of school is there, a deanery rep is there, uh, uh, somebody from the, the public is there, uh, and it's interesting to see you know, what trainees have to say about their educational supervisors and clinical supervisors. So we do encourage that in, in the Oxford Deanery. Um, I think I'm going to, there was one thing I wanted to say that, yeah, the thing I want to, just want to, really, really emphasize here that this day is not an assessment day for the trainee. The assessment has probably happened when the trainee and the educational supervisor met. So if, the, if your trainee has no idea what his outcome is going to be and he arrives to the ARCP panel, then the ES has done something wrong. The trainee should not get a shock on what outcome they're going to get on, on, on the day of ARCP. So we'll go through how that is assessed, but really that's the key thing. So first of all, it's an annual meeting. Secondly, the outcome should already be, uh, the trainee should already be aware of what the outcome is going to be. Uh, it's a joint effort of the ES, the educational supervisor and the trainee. The panel just basically quality assures uh, educational supervision at that, at that trust. Right, so what does the educational supervisor have to do? Uh, the first thing is it's really, really important, meet your trainee within two weeks of them starting at your trust. That's really important, we do, we do monitor that. Uh, it's, it, it's usually they start in August, and we do not like trainers to say that I was on holiday, I couldn't meet up with the trainee for about four weeks, met them at the end of August. 
sorry, that's not acceptable. So the, the, the initial meeting has to be done really quickly. We expect the, the PDP, the personal development plan, to be in place uh, within four weeks of them starting. Uh, it can be, it can evolve, but at least you know, there should be something on the portfolio to, to, to tell us that that meeting has happened. Uh, then it's a process of, of getting the experience, summative, formative and summative experience, something what we call supervised learning events or, or workplace-based assessments. Uh, I think everybody knows about that, yeah? Workplace-based assessments, yeah? And trainees, if there are any trainees here, you will know it can be quite hard to, to, to get all that evidence. So what we're seeing in Oxford is you should do at least one per week uh, with your trainer or with your other clinical trainers, uh, uh, clinical supervisors uh, on the shop floor. We are encouraging reflective practice uh, and uh, that not only should be looking at complaints against you or uh, you know, difficult cases or even maybe hopefully not involved in a, in a SUI, but uh, if you have, then we do want reflection on that. But we also want reflection on things you did well. So that's really encouraged. Reflective practice is encouraged a lot at the ARCP. Uh, and when the panel will sit, we will look carefully at what's in the portfolio uh, regarding that. Now in emergency medicine, there's been two big changes. Uh, so he'll ask me, has, how has patient safety improved with this process? Is it a tick box exercise or are you guys really getting something out of it? And what we've done, our, the Royal College of Emergency Physician has actually uh, uh, made two changes in the last one year. We're doing something called the Acute Care Assessment Tool, the ACAT, which, I've, which is just there. Uh, and then the ESLE, which it should, this should be Extended Supervised Learning Event. Okay, that's, uh, that's E-S-L-E, sorry, that's the wrong spelling there. And these have made a big difference. And I'm going to just explain what they are. So what we're doing in this ACAT is basically we ask the, uh, the, the, the uh, trainee, emergency medicine trainee, it takes on the role of the consultant on the floor. And we are, you know, so they're seeing about four to five patients so in about, about two hours. Uh, and then we will be seeing their management, the clinical management, uh, their referral to specialties, uh, and also handover. Handover is a, is a big thing which the GMC and our college is, 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 is pushing for, for improvement in quality care. So the ACAT form looks at that in great detail. And then the extended supervised learning event, that takes about four hours. Most of, us, uh, most of my colleagues are coming in our spare time to do that. We are not getting paid really for doing this as they takes four hours to do that. We have to do three in a year for each trainee. But what it involves is you follow up a, a trainee for four hours, you just with them. And what you're seeing on that is not clinical uh, management of patients, but actually the softer skills. So things like we, we will pick up on, you know, how are they managing um, conflict with other specialties it's very common in emergency medicine that you refer a patient to an orthopedic surgeon or to the surgical reg, uh, who can be extremely stroppy and very difficult to accept patients. And so how are they managing, managing that on the floor? How are they managing you know, the conversation over the phone? If, uh, how they escalate issues, whether it's with managers or with other clinicians? Uh, other things are, the, the last one I did was, uh, we, I noticed that one of the trainees, a pretty senior trainee, was not washing their hands between patients. He was going from patient to patient to patient without doing any of the infection control things. So these, some, some wonderful stuff is getting picked up by, uh, by this extended supervised learning event. We have let our dean re know that we're doing this in our spare time. I went on a night shift when I was not supposed to be on, but that was the only time I could, I could do it properly for my trainee, but it was really, really worth it. And the trainee really, really appreciated it's having that one-to-one -one kind of uh, nurturing care. Um, we also expect some management experience for them. So if they're, especially if they're ST4 and above, they will be going with us to CSU meetings. Uh, and then with clinical governance, we usually get them to lead on uh, M&M meetings. Uh, that has uh, given them some insight into how many patients actually do so badly in our department. Um, uh, it's brought up, you know, uh, them getting, you know, to, to engage with uh, not only uh, pharmacy errors, but also things, very mundane things that, the, you know, why did the patient fall off their bed, or why was a, you know, patient left in a room for two hours, or anybody, you know, doing any kind of ops on them, things like that come, that come up at, at clinical governance. So, so our trainees, so our hired trainees are getting that experience, it's actually putting them off becoming any consultants, but, uh, and they want to stay re registrars for as long as possible, but it's something that they will be having to face. So it's, it's been uh, quite useful. Uh, that the ARCP uh, process is, is encouraging that. Uh, so 
after they've done all this, the other thing we expect from the trainees is to basically uh, get a feedback, uh, a multi-source feedback, MSF, and what that is, it's a 360, and not only do they get it from their peers and their senior consultants, they need to get it from nurses, especially senior, uh, senior nurses, uh, a &E nurses are known to be tough, uh, you know, uh, tough bosses, uh, and also from the radiology department uh, and uh, portraying reception. So there's a whole lot, and we expect at least 20 uh, feedback forms uh, uh, for, uh, during the one year. Uh, the FEGS report, uh, so the GPs have something what they call the multiple consultant report, uh, and it's basically three or four consultants sitting down, or the medics also do that, uh, and we, we say, yeah, you know, we sit down and have a little faculty meeting, saying, you know, what do you think about the trainee, is he good? And uh, or bad, what do you think the weaknesses are? And then we come up with, with a statement. Uh, we have, uh, it's called the Faculty uh, uh, Educational Governance Statement Report that our college recommends, and it's, it's pretty much the same. So uh, if we have, if, if, if there's a, a trainee in difficulty, we will be, uh, you know, we have these meetings once a month, uh, the faculty group, uh, and so we will be seeing the, the progress of, of trainees that, that may, may need more, you know, more care, more, more, uh, more time, uh, or maybe some kind of remedial action. Uh, we will escalate it up to the deanery and to our head of school earlier as well. So after all that, um, trainee res responsibilities, are, well, you know, it's quite clear that they have to get all the SLEs done. Uh, and they have to attend 75% of the RTDs. There's a lot of simulation going, so nearly every RTD regional training day has 50% simulation now in it, which is really helping them. They have to be signed off for their research courses, or ATLS, ALS, uh, and be trauma team leaders by, the, by ST4 level, ordered research, uh, and as I said, the, the feedback. So, the top list. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so ARCP um, uh, members, just two things they need. They need to have done the equality and diversity training every three years, and they should have had ARCP trainers workshop uh, every three years. Um, outcomes, the number one is what they want. Every trainee wants a, a number, uh, outcome one. Two, three, and four are un unsatisfactory outcomes. Five uh, might change to outcome one if the evidence is, is, is completed. So as I said, it's documentary evidence that we look as a panel, so it's what's on the e-portfolio. Uh, and if it's not there, then we say it's not done. They, they might have done it. So we give them an outcome of five and give them a few weeks to, to get that sorted. And six is when they complete training and, and become our, our colleagues. So how will all this impact quality care, uh, quality of care and patient safety? Um, I think ACAT and uh, as the ESLI has made a big difference. Uh, it, it takes a, it's very intensive for us. Uh, we are doing it after, uh, you know, in our own clinical, uh, in our own non-clinical time. But these are our future. We want our trainees to come back as consultants. We are a very small field, uh, and we we really, really respect and really, really, you know, uh, value each each trainee. So, in conclusion, I think I just. When the two quickly in conclusion was that, yep, yeah, ARCP process is, uh, uh, should not be tick box exercise, and secondly, uh, uh, it, you know, make it useful, uh, for, especially for patient safety. Thank you. Thank you.